Today we're learning how to find common denominators to compare fractions. So we're going to start over here. If we have these two fractions, three tenths and seven twenty fifths. It's really difficult for us to compare these two fractions because they're different sizes. If we had an enormous sub sandwich and we cut it up into 10 pieces, and then we told you you could have three of those pieces. Would that be bigger or smaller than if we took the same sub sandwich, the same size, but cut it up into smaller pieces? We cut it up into 25 smaller pieces and gave you seven of those smaller pieces, which would be more. It's difficult to tell right now. So the first step in finding common denominators so we can compare these two fractions is to make a chart. So I'm going to come over here and make my chart. What we're looking to do is we're looking to find the least common multiple. It's also called the LCM, least common multiple. Important vocabulary word. So I'm going to come over here and make my chart. We should know what multiples are. Multiples get bigger. We're going to multiply the numbers. So 10 times 1 is 10. 10 times 2 is 20. 10 times 3 is 30. It's just like counting by tens. 40, 50. I'll stop at 50 for now. Now I'm going to do the same thing for 25. 25 times 1 is 25. Times 2 is 50. 25 times 3 is 75. 100 and 125. Now I look at my chart and I have to see what is the smallest number that I have in common on this chart. The answer is 50. Awesome. If I didn't find common numbers, I would have to keep on going. I'd have to keep on going with my multiples until I found one. But I found 50. So I'm going to write that over here. My denominator is now 50 for both of these fractions. 50 and 50. Now you have to ask yourself the question, what did I do to this 10 to turn it into a 50? Because we're trying to make equivalent fractions here. The answer is, look over here, 10 times 1, 10 times 2, 10 times 3, 10 times 4, 10 times 5. So I multiplied it by 5 times 5. Whatever I did to the denominator, I need to do to the numerator. 3 times 5 is 15. So this fraction is 15 over 50. I'm going to come over to the next number, 25. I'm not going to multiply it by 5. No, this is a different number. So I come over to this side. What did I do to the 25 to turn it into 50? The answer is I multiplied it by 1, 2. So whatever I did to the denominator, I need to do to the numerator. 7 times 2 is 14. So which number was bigger, 3 tenths or 7 25ths? The answer is 3 tenths. So the steps are, in order to find a common denominator, you need to first make a chart, make a list of the multiples, and then find the least common multiple. Come back, write your new denominator for both numbers, and then ask yourself, what did you do to the denominator to get your new denominator that is an equal denominator over here, a common denominator? Multiply by that number on your numerator, and you have your new equivalent fraction. Let's try another one. Let's get rid of that. Come on. Almost. Yes. OK, here we go. Our next two numbers. We are going to have 9 thirtieths. Or one third. We want to find common denominators so we can evaluate and see which one is bigger. So let's see if we remember our steps. The first thing we want to find is our least common multiple. So in order to do that, we have to do our chart. Here we go. Count by 30s. 30, 60, 90, 
120, 150. Next, three. I need to count by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. So when I look at this now, that I have my two columns, I need to go back and look what is the least common multiple. As I'm looking at these, do I see any? No, I don't. I don't see any that they have in common, so I need to keep going. When I need to keep going, I want to start with the number that I that was originally smaller. Because look, I'm not anywhere near these numbers. So I'm going to keep counting. 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Whoosh, finally got one. Here I go. So I'm going to rewrite my denominators down here. 30, 30. And I have what? I have the question to ask now. What did I do to this 30 to turn it into this 30? And the answer is nothing. Multiply by 1. So 9 times 1 is 9. That's easy. Awesome. I come over here. What did I do to this 3 to make it 30? Well, I did a lot. I had to multiply by 10. So whatever I did to the denominator, I need to do to the numerator. 1 times 10 is 10. So which one was bigger? This guy right here. 10 thirtieths. So again, finding common denominators to compare fractions. There is a different way to do this. And you're allowed to choose right now whichever way you would like, whichever way is easier. So here comes the second way to figure out common denominators. We're going to have two fractions. 7 eighths and 8 ninths. I want to find a common denominator for these two fractions. This is kind of like the shortcut way to do it. Are you ready? Okay, you take this denominator, 8, we're going to start with 7 eighths, and multiply it for these two numbers. So it would work like this. You take the denominator and multiply the numerator and the denominator of the other fraction by it. So 8 times 8 is 64. 9 times 8 is 72. Then you take this denominator and you multiply it to the top and bottom over here. 9 times 8 is 72. This is times 9. 9 times 7 is 63. So now I have common denominators and I can compare my fractions. So that's the other way you can find common denominators by multiplying the opposite number by the denominator. Let's try one more of those. Here we go. Oops, let me fix that. That's better. One fifth or four twenty fifths. So we're going to take my denominator over here and multiply it both of these. So I'm going to have 5 times 25, which is 125. 5 times 4, which is 20. Then I come over here and multiply by these two. 25 times 5, I already know, is 125. 25 times 1 is 25. So now I can see which one's bigger. 25 over 125 is larger. So you can choose whichever way is easier for you to find your common denominators. Good luck on your activity.